Come on, this is more exciting to watch a paint dry. It stopped all by itself and there's no cases in there. When I first started, I just, this is my 650. I just upgraded from a 550 and I love the thing. Made by Dylan. I, I just love the thing and it has a case feeder and everything on it. But first thing I loaded was 9mm. Probably where most people start, or a lot of people anyway. And what I had is a, uh, the thing was running all the time. Every time one case would drop down, it'd turn on and off, turn on and off. And I didn't think that'd be good for the motor. So I got, I got on the forums. I couldn't find any information about uh, anything anybody made that would help us with this. So I got on eBay and I found a little circuit here that like 25 bucks. It wasn't much at all. It's simple. You feed 12 volts into it to power it over here. And if you're 110, you can turn it on and off right there. And you can set it. These two little, where's my ink pen? Right there. See the little red things? If you leave them on, it's running in second mode. So it's adjustable from 1 to 120 seconds. Okay, but if you take them off, it's minutes 1 to 120. I wanted seconds. And there's the schematic up there. It comes with this, this paper. And then there's a wiring diagram down here. What I did is I just connected my 110 here. I took a, a short uh, extension cord, three wire extension cord. I cut it in the middle. And I used a flat extension cord, one like you'd use for a, uh, well, I hadn't happened to have a half a dozen of these short uh, utility extension cords, real heavy. You don't need it this heavy. I wanted it so the wire would come down. I could tell which wire was which. Because I wanted to make sure that I was snipping, interrupting the black wire, which is the hot wire in 110. Okay? And how you tell that is you look at the female plug. Like here, if you look at these plugs, see how there's one that's a little bit fatter than the other one? Well, the one that's bigger is the neutral. The one that's smaller is the hot one. So I did it was easy enough. I just could see what side it was on. I traced it down the wire. Boom, there's my hot one. I snipped it. And that's the one that goes through here. Okay? Uh, one of the connections goes to here, like that, the black wire would. And from here, then you ran that over to the screw on the receptacle I'm going to show you, onto the brass screw. Okay? The other wires on the extension cord go directly to the back of the uh, receptacle. The neutral go the, the white or the neutral goes to the other side, and then the green one, which is the ground, goes to the ground wire in the receptacle. It's real simple to hook up. This is a little circuit, so you got to power it. You got to give it 12 volts somewhere. I just happened to find a 12 volt wall wart that I had laying around from I don't know an old video game or something of the kids that they destroyed or whatever. My kids are 35, so I have a whole pile of stuff and they're gone. Okay. Anyways. It was real simple. 12 volts, negative goes in the bottom, the top one goes in the top of the screw, or the screw up from that. I'll show you on here. Negative 12 volts goes here, positive 12 goes here. Nothing goes in the middle hole, middle screw. These two screws are your two ACs. Okay, those are the ones you're, you're going to cut. And all it does is there's a relay right here, this orange relay, and it just opens and closes that circuit. Now on mine, the one I built, this is my spare, when I got done, I went ahead and taped the bottom of this with electrical tape, because I didn't want any of those connections exposed, because there's 110 volts behind the relay, and I didn't want to get turned on. Because once you get it hooked up, you got to play with these to decide what time you want. I have mine set to 45 seconds. Now, one of them, this top one determines how long it runs when it turns on. This one... Uh, determines how many, how long it is until it turns on. I happen to have mine both set at 45 seconds. It's trial and error. All right. I don't load real fast. I'm not in any hurry. I'm not trying to set any speed records. So, here's what I build it into. I got a deep box at my local uh, Home Depot. <laughs> it's an old plate. I had an old plate laying around. And there's a receptacle in there. And my circuit board, because that's a deep box, there's plenty of room back there for the circuit board. I notched out the bottom, 
so that the wires could fit in easy enough. Here's my little wall ward I had. It'll tell you right on the wall warts most of them what they are. You do have to figure out which one's hot, but you can do that with a multimeter easy enough. And this here has no purpose other than telling me when it's operating. I put a nightlight on it because I wanted to uh, just know when it's on and off in case there's something wrong. I wanted to put that circuit inside the Dillon case feeder. I could have, there's plenty of room inside this case feeder and it's built well. I could have mounted a circuit board in here and all that. I didn't want to modify the case feeder. It's brand new. I just didn't want to screw with it. And this system is just so much easier because if I don't want to use it, let's say for some reason that if it, maybe it failed or I just don't want to use it, I just unplug it, plug in the wall. This power strip here, I just turn on whenever I'm going to hand load. It turns on all my lights on the press and the overhead lights and all that stuff. So I like it this way. I didn't have to mod the case feeder, but I got what I wanted. Okay? It worked for me. So I have nothing. I don't know this guy other than I bought something from him. I will let's see if it'll, I don't know. I bought it on an eBay auction. I'll put the link to that auction in the description, but that might change, you know, how eBay auctions come and go. I got his card he sent me. Well, the key, there it goes. It focused on it. There you go. So that gives you, you can go to his website and all that good stuff. All right. And there, I don't know if I can get that to focus on there or not. Yeah, it focused pretty good, didn't it? Okay, that's the container so it's a really nice thing I think I paid 22 or 25 bucks so it wasn't much at all okay and it works it did what I wanted and I mean I don't know I, I'm a concern that turning a motor on and off 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 is probably not good for it it might not be a problem I mean Dylan doesn't make any junk so it's probably gonna last if it's Dylan but the noise also drove me nuts. I like to listen to talk radio or something when I'm hand loading, and I just didn't want to listen to the screaming all the time. I did load some uh, 300 blackout with it, and the 300 blackout doesn't feed through there just perfectly, okay? So I can, I don't really need it with a 300 blackout, which is great because all I did when the case feeder couldn't keep up with me, I just unplugged it from here, plugged it in the wall. We're off to the races, so. Worked out pretty good. Here's the, the case feeder running there. Oh, pop. Okay. So that's it. Hope it helps somebody. And I'll probably put that description. And I'll put the link to the auction at least in, in, the, uh, in the thing. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.